morning, good morning. We're in Philippians chapter 3. We're going to begin with verse 12 today. Uh, Paul has a lot of things to say. He starts out talking about I, 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 I. We do that a lot of times, but he does it in the right way. And, uh, and he, can, he teaches us so much with every, every word, every verse. I just wish that uh, we, we could physically stand up to doing a passage rightly. Of course, we'd be here all day for 24 hours per verse <laughs> if we really did that. But uh, we want to get what we can. Let, I pray that God will speak to you. Would you stand together as we read the word beginning with verse 12 through 17. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brothers, account not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if anything you are otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brothers, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as you have uh, as you have us for an example. Heavenly Father, take hold of our hearts and Father let your word burn deep inside of us. Father help us to learn even more as we leave this place to study and to begin looking up those things that are important and getting a hold of the fullness of of uh, what this passage means according to other verses you've placed in words uh, throughout the scripture. Help us, Father, to, to grow with depth and to grow and to move forward with the assurance of your presence in our lives and your power. And Father, help us not to be selfish, but to yield to you in all things. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. He said, I haven't already attained it. I'm not perfect, but I'm following after something that has already got a hold of me. It's already apprehended me, and that was Jesus. Uh, when I read this passage, I, I thought about uh, dating my wife. We had a blind date. I was not excited about a blind date. The last, last one I'd had was not good. <laughs> and... Uh, my wife wasn't excited because the last one she had wasn't good either. <laughs> so nevertheless, um, we showed up and it was a bit of an ordeal. My car wouldn't start. So I ended up showing up on a motorcycle. <laughs> she changed clothes and it was cold outside and we went to the pizza place and turned around and came back. It was just too cold to ride that thing. So that's how we started. It didn't take long for me to realize that I believed I might want to apprehend this girl. And by the time I did, I finally realized she had already apprehended me. Well, when you take that in terms of God, we begin to realize how he works in our lives. He's always been there for you. He calls you and he captures your heart and your love and, and all of who you are. And if you're missing that, you're missing everything that's important in life. The Bible says that God is love. So if you ever want love in your life, you need to tend to God. And you have to learn how to love so that you can learn what it is when you're being loved. Sometimes my wife loved me and I didn't realize it was love. I thought she was just mean. But she was making me better. She was loving me. She is a little bit mean sometimes, but in a good way, in a good way. 
Never give the impression or allow somebody to think that you have it all together. Paul was making a big point about that here. And in the first several verses, it's uh, uh, from 12 through uh, 14 or so. I believe it's verse 14. Yeah. It's all about, you see the word I. I did this. I, 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 I. But he's not being arrogant about it. He's talking about how Christ has, has changed his life and what Christ has done for him. I follow after if that I may be apprehended apprehended uh, I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended King James is a little tough but uh, I use it anyway and in this uh, in this passage we we need to understand that God wants to get a hold of your life he wants to get a hold of your marriage he wants to get a hold of those struggles that you're going through whatever it is whether it's on the on the job or a a neighbor next door, whatever is taking place in your life, he wants to walk with you in that process and he wants to have hold of you so that you can get hold of the situations that are around you, of the difficulties, of the struggles of life. Notice he says, I may and I am. I count not myself in verse 13. Uh, he says to have apprehended but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are before, that, that one thing, one thing. How many of you ever saw the movie City Slickers? You know that? Man, some of you guys have missed it. Billy Crystal, Jack Palance, and at, toward the end of the movie, Jack Palance says, you've got to find that one thing in your life. Of course, it's given from a world's perspective. But the truth is, we need to find that one thing, and that one thing is Jesus Christ. We have to find him in everything uh, that takes place in our life, and we have to learn to forget what's behind. Now, Paul places this in such a way that it is forgetting what's behind every day. Every new day, you forget about yesterday, and you, you look toward what Christ has for you today. Every day we grow. And we forget those things that are behind, not forgetting to be who we're supposed to be. We've learned lessons from that. But we forget where we've erred. We forget what we've done, and we start doing those right things, those good things. We press toward. He's talking about a race that he's running. I forget what's behind. I'm not worried about how far I've run. I'm worried about where I'm going. And I press. I'm pushing it. And I can remember we had a, a foster son that was awesome uh, track kiddo. It was freshman year. He went to state. Just a, a wonderful guy. Had more determination than I ever saw of anybody in my life. He never thought about what happened yesterday. He was always thinking about what's today. He didn't think about who he passed. He's thinking about what's up ahead. And he was so focused and so strong in those things. He left the rest of it behind and he did that moment by moment. He was a fine young man. We had absolute joy of, of being with him for a couple of years. And he says, I pressed toward that mark. I pushed for it. When Rue would be running around the track, we'd be hollering. Come on, come on, push harder, don't give up. Stay focused, push, push, push. You tell your kids that. Don't give up. Stay focused. Stay focused. Keep going. If we don't stay focused, if we don't look forward, we lose our step. We get behind. And the first thing you know, we're not winning the race as Christ would have us to win it. And so Paul says that I press toward the mark. This is what I do. He told them what he does, and this is a way that you can touch people's lives. It's what Christ does in your life and how he's changed you. Uh, you can tell who you were and how life has taken place uh, since you've known Christ as your Lord and Savior. And so you can share the I part of it, but then once we get together, we've got to come to this next, in verse 15, I press, or let us, I'm sorry. Let us. 
Let us therefore as many as be perfect <laughs> in the King James. Mature is the word. As, as many of us as are mature, growing in Christ. Uh, not perfect, he says uh, in another place that uh, he's, he's, not, he's not achieved everything yet. But let us together. Church is about let us. It's not about what one person accomplishes. It's not about uh, a, a shining star in the group. Great teams are always about us. And there's no one person that stands out to be the star. And if he does, then uh, if he's smart, he'll step back and he'll give credit to everyone else because he knows it's a team effort. Let us is church business. And we have to be mature. We have to be grown up. We have to be people focused on the right things, the things of God, and we have to do it together. It's heartbreaking when it's time for a visitation or something to take place and there's no us. <laughs> I I've been, was a pastor in small churches for uh, 25 years. And there were lots of times when there was a Sunday school class or a, a, uh, a visitation or an activity and the us wasn't there. Just everybody else had something else going on because they didn't understand us. They understood themselves. They understood uh, what was going on perhaps in their family and they didn't know how to adjust to those things. And as life went by and, and, and we began to accumulate more things and more stuff, we have to take care of them. In order to take care of our stuff, something else gets left out of the way and it's usually relationships. In particular, our relationship with Jesus Christ can get caught in that trap. But it affects our children and our wife, our husband, our extended family, brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles, because we fail to see us. We just see me. We see our little family, our little, our little marriage, what we have, what we can get, more comforts, more conveniences. And those things have a greater price than you can ever imagine. It's the hardship of life that you learn great lessons. It's the difficulties and the failures that teach you the best things that you don't forget. You ever realize that? So you have to stick your neck out a little. And you have to get, uh, make some mistakes. Uh, I've been doing a lot of efforts of remodeling around my house. There's some areas I'm getting pretty good at because I've made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> and I had to keep correcting them. And so I learned how to do some of those little skills that I didn't have before. The same thing is true in our lives with Christ. How you tell, talk to others about Jesus. Who you are and where you are and how you need to grow. All of those things. All of those things as being a parent or a friend or a neighbor. Uh, that uh, sometimes we really aren't very good at needs to improve and it will if we get a hold of us. You're going to find personalities that you don't like and they may not like you. That's not the point. The point is learning to grow through that and finding what you can together in Christ Jesus and growing as a church in Christ Jesus and as neighbors and as friends. So uh, he says then... Uh, and if anything be otherwise minded, God will reveal it to you. <laughs> He's going to let you know. When you get off track, he'll let you know. Sometimes through your family, sometimes through a neighbor or a friend, and it might upset you and you might react to it. Hopefully you'll know how to go back and to apologize and correct those things. That's part of life. It's part of us. You have a neighborhood. That's in us. People in that neighborhood may not know that you're a Christian, may not even know who you are. But you could meet them. You could have a little block party, four or five. Just want to get to know you. It's something that some of you can do. Maybe it's something at work. Maybe it's a way of just meeting someone for coffee and saying, you know, we've known each other off and on for a while. I, I just like to get to know you better. Can I buy you some coffee? take you to lunch or breakfast. 
that's part of us. That's part of us reaching out to the world around us. And sometimes you find someone uh, that also knows Jesus and you can do us together in touching lives and growing together, sharing the word. Because it's not enough to interpret it yourself. I, I, I've sat with preachers and I have small groups of preachers for a number of years in uh, our association and and getting them together, we'd take a look at a scripture and we all had such different ideas. <laughs> there were things we agreed on, but there were other perspectives because every word in the scriptures, like that starburst I was telling you about, goes so many directions in the Bible. And so when you look at God's word, that word defines much larger than anything else that we use in our world in language. And so you have to study the words in the scripture and you have to begin to see how God's working through different people and uh, different ways. And he says in verse 16, Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and mind the same thing. Be followers together of me. Walk by the same rule. You've got principles, you've got some, have some guidelines in your church. Um, those things we're to walk by. We need to get a hold of it. We need to find out what our basics are and, and, and hold on to those things tightly. You need to find that out about every other church. How you can work together with them as churches. Let us, let us focus on the right things of God together. That's our business. That's what we should be doing. Wherever you are in Christ, he says, where we have already attained, wherever you are in Christ, you need to keep growing because you're not there yet. Even Paul admits that he's one of them, that he's still growing. So he says, brothers, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as you have for an example. Be followers with me. I'm part of you. I haven't learned it all, he's saying. I'm still struggling with it. And I won't have it all perfectly. Some people have taken the word perfect that was uh, up at the beginning and, and uh, talks they have a, a, a theology of sinless perfection. That's not what that passage means at all. We never become perfect on this earth. Our perfection is in Christ Jesus and Him alone. The word is mature. To be mature, to be mature says, I'm not perfect. To be mature says, I need to grow. To be mature says, I need to be a partner in this thing and not trying to do everything by myself or not doing anything, and just coming and listening and feeling inspired, but never accomplishing anything. Not touching lives, not teaching, not working with children, not uh, showing up when other people could use help uh, in a, uh, an effort that a church uh, has decided on. It has to be us. It can't be uh, individuals. Sometimes we have to go along with an individual. We need to do that. There are times when I needed to yield and I just had to back off and say, you know, I'm going to work with this guy. I think he's crazy. I don't like his idea. I had a better idea. But you know, I think God just wants me to learn how to get along. That was more important to me than getting my way in the end. It was learning how to get along with someone who was a little bit difficult, who had to have their way. When I came alongside and became partners with them and we worked together, our lives changed, both of us. Because Christ looks at a congregation, at a family, and at a marriage, and he sees the plural. He wants you to take hold of the relationships that you have and the relationships that you can't ha can have and Make something of them. Wherever you are in Christ, walk by the same rule. Mind the same thing. Be followers, he says in verse 17. Mark those that do things well, that do things right in Christ. Mark them. Pay attention to them. 
Uh, the word mark has a, the idea of, of fixing your focus on them so that you can grow with them and through them. Are they perfect? No, they're growing too. But we can find a, a way of growing together through the different errors and the mistakes. That's what marriage is all about. That's why as Christians in marriage, uh, we should be exemplary by looking at each other and growing and uh, developing in the us uh, of the marriage. And so he says, uh, these people are an example. You're an example. And we need to take examples and make sure that they're proper in Christ Jesus. Every one of you here, even your children, are an example to someone. Sometimes we really blow that. We're always an example, either good or bad. Sometimes we're just bad examples. And we need to confess it, let people know that we see it, and change it. We need to find examples. We need to look for examples. We need to find someone that we can admire that can bless our lives. And if you're so far ahead in the game that you can't learn from someone else, you're in a sad situation. I've met carpenters like that. Couldn't tell them anything about being a carpenter. Every profession has men or women like that in that profession. And they think They've accomplished it all. They're the perfect example. They want everything, everything to go their way. They don't understand us. The plural. The working together. The responsibility. The way to teach. The way to grow someone else. To make, the way to make a great team. We have to keep growing. And forget the past but focus on today and focus on tomorrow. You can't do that well if you don't read the scripture well. If you have a light devotional time, so, oh, well, I listen to the radio. I get Tony Evans on there, man. I listen to him. I, I listen to those. That's good stuff. But your Bible is your Bible. And you need to be in your Bible. And it shouldn't be one or two verses and I've done it. Okay, I'm going on to work. You ought to get up early enough or a few minutes ahead or make some plans in the evenings or at some point where you're able to really read and think about what you're reading. This foolishness of tagging little things around us, having little short devotional phrases and stuff, let it, let it cut into your heart. Let Christ get a hold of you in the evenings and the mornings. How are you going to keep up with him through the day if you don't? How are you going to rest at night if you can't walk with him? Get a hold of the word. Let us, let us together see that one thing change, you'll see a church absolutely change. That goes into every part of being church, including giving. Do the us. Do what God calls for. It means going. It means praying. It means caring. Let us walk together in Christ. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I just ask that you would allow your word to dig deeper into our hearts as we go through the week. Father, that you would help us and burden us to not do the light things, but the hard things. To help us understand that we don't grow through comfort and convenience and rest and relaxation. We grow through the difficulty and the pain and the struggle. Help us to understand the application of your word to these things. And we might know you that we might love you deeply and be willing to give our lives for you. Father, take hold of us, for we're not where we ought to be. Father, lead us and guide us that we might be 
us in you. In Christ's name, amen. Would you stand together?